In today's episode, we're diving into the latest at Starbase as SpaceX gears up for Starship's fifth integrated flight test. We've got exclusive details on the intense testing, repairs, and upgrades of the launch tower arms to ensure a flawless booster catch. There's growing concern that SpaceX might need more time to perfect the system before Flight 5 can take off. We'll also explore the cutting-edge upgrades on Starship Block 2, including the new design upgrade, the rapid progress on the second launch tower, and the high-stakes structural tests of Test Tank 16. As Starship's fifth integrated flight test nears, major progress has been made at Starbase, prepping both Starship 30 and Super Heavy Booster 12 for the highly anticipated mission. Ship 30, which has undergone several key upgrades and completed essential engine tests, is currently stationed in the Rocket Garden, where teams are applying the final finishing touches. Concurrently, Booster 12 is housed in the Mega Bay, where it is undergoing final inspections and checks before proceeding to the next phase of testing. Both Ship 30 and Booster 12 will soon be rolled out to the launch site for the wet dress rehearsal, the final pre-launch test that involves loading the rocket with propellant and simulating a countdown to verify all systems are ready for flight. As per the developments, Flight 5 is currently anticipated in the first or second week of September. However, the launch timeline is still subject to the completion of the licensing process, as the FAA continues its thorough review of SpaceX's booster catch plan before issuing the necessary authorization. Over the past several weeks, SpaceX teams have been diligently working on the tower arms, implementing upgrades and repairs to ensure a successful booster catch. These efforts culminated in a series of tests conducted last week with test tank B14.1, which was installed on the orbital launch mount. The test began with independent and combined swing tests of the launch tower arms. These tests simulated the arm movements during a booster catch attempt, allowing engineers to observe and fine-tune the synchronization and range of motion. Following these, landing rail compression tests were conducted, where the arms landing rails were pressed against the catch points installed on the test tank. This helped engineers calculate the compressive stresses the arms and rails would experience during an actual booster catch, providing critical data for ensuring structural integrity under load. Next, the team conducted controlled impact tests, where the arms were intentionally brought into contact with the test tank. These tests aimed to refine the precision of the arms' movements and assess the force exerted on the booster's structure during a rapid approach and capture. By analyzing the resulting data, engineers could better understand how the arm's impact might affect the booster during real-world conditions. To further mitigate shocks and vibrations, additional cushions were installed on the arms. These cushions, along with the existing rubber pads, act as dampeners, reducing the impact force and slowing down the booster's descent just before it lands on the arms. The impact tests verified the effectiveness of these cushioning mechanisms. However, one significant challenge observed during the tests was the back and forth bouncing of the arms after impact. This excessive motion could jeopardize the success of a booster catch by destabilizing the booster after capture. SpaceX engineers are working on solutions to eliminate or minimize this bouncing to ensure a stable and controlled catch. After completing the catch practice tests, the arms were fully extended to allow for a detailed inspection of both the test tank and the arms for any signs of damage or wear. The inspection revealed impact marks at the points of contact, but showed no major structural damage. The test tank was then removed from the launch mount and returned to the production site for further analysis. In response to the test results, SpaceX has decided to make several design changes to the arms. Engineers stripped the paint off the weld marks on the long vertical supports of the arms to inspect the welds thoroughly. They then installed large doubler plates over these welds to strengthen the vertical members. Doubler plates are additional metal layers added to reinforce areas that experience high stress. By distributing the load over a larger area, these plates enhance the structural integrity of the vertical supports, ensuring they can withstand the forces exerted during a booster catch without failure. At least 32 weld areas are currently being reinforced with doubler plates. The cushions installed on the arms were removed after the tests due to damage incurred during the process, and they are expected to be replaced with new ones. The new cushions may incorporate improved materials or designs to better absorb impact forces and reduce vibrations during the booster catch. Extensive welding activities are ongoing at various locations, particularly near the arm carriage, where the arms are mounted and pivoted. Teams recently installed scaffolding surrounding the portion of the tower where the tower arms will sit during the booster catch operations. This is likely part of the efforts to add structural reinforcements to this critical area of the tower, ensuring that the arms can handle the significant stresses involved in catching and stabilizing the booster. Attention has also been directed toward the ship quick disconnect mechanism, responsible for supplying electrical power and propellants to the Starship second stage. 
The ship quick disconnect arm sustained minor damage during the Flight 4 liftoff due to insufficient retraction speed. SpaceX had to replace one of the damaged propellant delivery pipes of the mechanism after Flight 4. The latest upgrades could be part of efforts to enhance the retraction speed, aiming to prevent similar damage during Flight 5 and future missions. Overall, the sheer volume of upgrades and fixes that the tower arms and other launch pad infrastructure have received over the past few months is remarkable. While the launch vehicle might be ready for an early September liftoff, the ongoing work at the site makes it seem increasingly likely that the launch will be delayed. The issues observed during the recent catch practice tests, particularly the excessive bouncing of the arms and the need for further reinforcement with doubler plates, suggest that the arms are not yet fully optimized for a safe and successful booster catch. Additionally, ongoing work on the quick disconnect mechanism and the tower indicates that the launch pad infrastructures are still undergoing significant improvements. These factors suggest that SpaceX may need more time to ensure that all systems are fully tested and ready for the upcoming mission, likely resulting in a launch delay. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The construction of the second launch tower is advancing rapidly at the launch site. The eighth section of the tower was stacked during the morning hours of August 17. The next day, the ninth and final section of the tower was transported to the launch site from the Sanchez site. This section houses the pulley systems essential for raising and lowering the tower arms along the tower's length. The pulleys were pre-installed on the section before rolling out to the launch site. After arriving at the launch site, teams spend the next couple of days working on the section, making final adjustments before stacking. Finally, the section was lifted on Wednesday morning and placed atop the existing structure, completing the stacking of the second launch tower. Currently, teams are focused on finalizing other critical aspects of the tower's infrastructure. This includes installing the elevator system, which will provide access to different levels of the tower, as well as connecting the plumbing and electrical wiring that runs throughout the structure. These systems are essential for the tower's operational functionality and are expected to be completed within the next two to three weeks. Additionally, teams are preparing the tower's base to accommodate the drawworks mechanism. The drawworks is a large winch used for raising and lowering the tower arms. It operates with a powerful drum that spools and unspools steel cables connected to the arms. Once all systems are in place and tested, the tower arms and carriage, currently located at the Sanchez site, will be transported to the launch site for integration into the tower. Work on the Pad 2 flame trench continues in parallel with the tower construction, although no significant developments have been reported in the past week. A significant development has been observed at the build site with regard to the stacking of Ship 33, the first Starship Block 2 prototype. The methane downcomer was installed into the ship this past week, and its design is significantly different from the downcomers of the Block 1 starships. In Block 1 ships, the methane downcomer, which transfers liquid methane from the upper methane tank to all six engines of the ship, consists of a single, large tube that runs through the center of the liquid oxygen tank. However, in the Block 2 design, the downcomer is more sophisticated and consists of a central tube surrounded by three additional tubes. The central tube is dedicated to supplying methane to the inner three sea-level Raptor engines, while the surrounding tubes are designed to feed the outer three vacuum-optimized engines. SpaceX likely opted for this configuration to enhance the overall performance of Starship. By separating the methane delivery paths for the sea-level and vacuum engines, SpaceX can potentially reduce complexity and improve the efficiency and reliability of fuel distribution during various flight phases. This design might also reduce the risk of fuel flow issues during critical maneuvers, such as the transition from atmospheric ascent to vacuum operation. The header tank downcomers, which carry propellants to the engines for landing burn from the upper header tanks, were also installed this past week. The final aft section of Ship 33 will be integrated with the already stacked sections in the coming days, marking the completion of the ship's structural assembly. Following this, the focus will shift to the installation of the remaining heat tiles and the completion of external plumbing and electrical wiring. Ship 33 is being prepared for what is expected to be the seventh integrated flight test, which, given the current pace of development, is anticipated to take place in late 2024 or early 2025. The Starship test tank, designated Test Tank 16, is currently being prepared for structural testing at the Massey site. The tank is constructed from a five-ring Starship forward section with stringers and a four-ring aft section. It features an elliptical forward dome with extra welds. The design improvements observed in this tank align with those found on Starship V2 vehicles, suggesting that Test Tank 16 is a Block 2 test article. Test Tank 16 underwent cryogenic proof testing at Massey's last month to detect potential leaks in its structure and confirm plumbing reliability. 
it was subsequently brought back to the production site for further processing. On August 16, the test tank was transported back to Massey's and placed inside the new can crusher test rig. Following this, the test rig's cap was installed, setting the stage for the structural tests. The can crusher test rig is a specialized test stand designed to simulate the forces experienced during a Starship flight on stainless steel test articles. The test rig's cap, outfitted with 20 cables, will connect to hydraulic rams within the rig. During the crush test, these rams will compress the tank, simulating the maximum forces expected during an actual flight. Simultaneously, additional hydraulic rams will exert force on the aft section of the tank, replicating the thrust generated by the Raptor engines. This comprehensive structural testing is crucial for collecting vital data on the Starship's structural integrity under flight stresses, ensuring that all rocket components can endure the actual conditions of flight. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. Rocket Factory Augsburg, a German aerospace company, experienced a significant setback when the first stage of its RFA-1 rocket exploded during a static fire test on August 19. The test, conducted at the Soxavord spaceport in the Shetland Islands, Scotland, was a critical step in validating the rocket's first stage ahead of its first launch. A BBC video of the test showed a fireball erupting around the base of the booster as the stage ignited its nine helix engines. Moments after ignition, the engines appeared to shut down, and the fire intensified, with flames shooting out sideways from the rocket. The situation quickly escalated as the booster toppled from its mount, culminating in a catastrophic explosion upon impact with the ground. Preliminary assessments suggest that a fuel leak might have caused one of the engines to explode, causing the loss of the stage. Notably, the stage wasn't just a test article, it was the actual flight hardware intended for launch. Fortunately, no personnel were injured, and the launch pad, still under construction, was reported to be secure. In an official statement, Rocket Factory acknowledged the loss of the stage and indicated that they would collaborate with Soxavord Spaceport and relevant authorities to investigate the cause of the explosion. Founded in 2018, Rocket Factory Augsburg is part of a new wave of European startups aiming to carve out a niche in the commercial space launch industry. The company's flagship vehicle, the RFA-1 rocket, is a three-stage launch vehicle designed with a focus on efficiency and cost-effectiveness. Standing approximately 30 meters tall with a diameter of 2 meters, the rocket boasts a payload capacity of up to 1,600 kilograms, making it ideal for small satellite missions. The rocket's first stage is powered by nine helix engines, which use a combination of RP-1 and liquid oxygen as propellants, generating a total thrust of 900 kilonewtons. The second stage is driven by a single vacuum-optimized helix engine, while the third stage is powered by a Phoenix engine that runs on nitromethane and nitrous oxide and generates a thrust of 1.5 kN. This three-stage configuration ensures that payloads can reach their designated orbits. Before the recent anomaly, Rocket Factory had been on track to conduct its first orbital launch as early as September. The second and third stages of the rocket had already passed flight acceptance testing, making the first stage test a crucial milestone. The explosion and subsequent loss of the first stage now pose a significant challenge for the company. Rebuilding the stage could delay their launch timeline, representing a substantial setback in their plans to become a key player in the commercial space industry. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.